And that's the question that I had. I don't know, like, who to look for. I mean, Lowe gave me some things. Mm -hmm. now. He gave me some people to look up and how to ask, what questions to ask. Right. And he said to ask, like, you know what I mean? Um, what's the percentage, you know, of of the load? Because some people give you 80, 80% out of 80%. You know, he said you want 100%, 80% out of 100%. I know if I'm not mistaken. That's what he said. I don't got the paper. I wrote it down right. <clears throat> that he was saying. But um, now it, it's, it depends on how you want to run. There's so many places you can take it. The owner out companies, there's a lot out there. Like some dudes take the uh, Albanian and the Russian route. Mm -hmm. And uh, that seems to be a really lucrative, but it's very, very uh, 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 rough, crass people. Like they're very, they don't play around. Some people take the, they'll go to a prime affiliate company and run prime freight and, and have their umbrella over them. That means they're going to help you with towing and, 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 and fixing your truck and all that type of stuff. Some people go the uh, the, uh, the Lone Mountain way. I don't know, they go the Lone Star, Mercer. They go to these places with their own. These are owner op companies only. Lone Star, Mercer, Jones Motors, they'll go over there. Because, you know, if you know how to work the lanes and you know how to talk to brokers and stuff like that, you can have $15,000 weeks if you know what you're doing. You know what I mean? So, but some people like me, I'm not a broker. I don't like talking to brokers for my money. But some people do. Now, now you got to figure, you got to do it so you can figure out, so you can figure out um, if it's for you. Because someone like Lowe, it, he shines with dealing with brokers. <sighs> I don't. If I feel like you BSing me, I'm going to spaz out and mess the relationship up. So I don't play with brokers. You got to figure out what temperament do you have. If you can play that song and dance and BS and, you know, that, 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 uh, what they call it, that, that wooing that goes along with trying to get in the good side, you can make a lot of money. <clears throat> well, I mean, right now I know it's, it's, it's all about just trying to figure out on a company's truck. You know what I mean? Because that's what kind of what I was kind of instructed. Well, looking at your videos, you mm -hmm. see, I know when you said Lowe was saying that you can go leasing right off the back. Well, he told me that if at least it would teach me how to when I own my own truck. But then I listened to you. I was like, man, I don't think I want to lease because I don't because I. I hear a lot of horror stories and I'm back and forth. So I'd rather just drive a company truck and, mm -hmm. and, and figure it out there. And then. Okay, well, let me, let me, let me ask you a couple questions. Yep. So what, what Lo said told you is perfectly right. Have you ever bought a super single before? Have you ever dealt with the rigmarole of a, of, of a, uh, of a dealership? Do you know the wait time between a, um, a warranty fix and a cash fix? Do you know if they're just adding, if they're just telling you they're fixing something just to make you do it? You know, you, that's why he says, you know, maybe you want to play around with a lease before you go buy your own truck because there's a lot of tricks. Gideon, thank you for being uh, patient. There's a there's a lot of there's a lot of um a trick. That's why he's saying maybe you just want to try your feet a little bit over there so you can you can get now now if you just feel like I'll deal with it. You can learn the hard way. People do it all the time. Hmm. It's just me. You you broke up. You broke up. I think. Yeah, I can hear. You. I think that. I think that. I think that's you, uh, Anthony. Call back in. Hold on. Uh, uh, Gideon, am I breaking up? You were a second ago, but you're perfectly clear now. All right, what you got to say before Anthony called back? I appreciate you for being a uh, 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 patient. Hey, man, it's, it's a process, man. I drive trucks. I got to be patient. So, so what what you got to say about what you done heard, man? I just want to share my leasing story, bro. Mm -hmm. Stevens Transport. I jumped in it way too soon. It's this guy named Will. He sounds like a he sells like a used car salesman. Come on over to the Alliance side and uh, get in on the business side. You could make a lot more money. Let me put some money in your pocket. First off, you capped at what you can make before expenses for the simple fact that it's mileage based pay. Mm. So you capped and then you got all the expenses coming out, which is expected, but it's pretty excessive. 
And wow. when it all says and done, when it's all said and done, the money just, I did a video on it as a matter of fact, <laughs> but it really doesn't, it just, just doesn't add up the way it is. But going back on your point about your DM getting on your bad side or whatnot, mm -hmm. I was late on a load to McLean. Right. I had to pay the late fee. Right. And after paying the late fee, he sent me to Colorado and he had me sit for four days. No money. And then he kept doing little things to screw me over. And eventually I said, you know what? I'm leaving. The lease is not walk away. They charge you $800. But I didn't care. $800 for what? To break the lease. The walk away lease they tell you is walk away. Try walking away. And this is at Stevens Trevor? Yeah. Oh, we're going to have to get King D. Roger here. Yeah, they tell you it's a walk away lease, but it is not. Matter of fact, I, on my video, I showed the paperwork because, you know, I had the whole thing on my phone and I showed it to the screen and you right. could actually see what it is. Right. And I showed that paperwork. So, yeah, it, it is not walk away. They charge you $800 and they tell you that. Mm hmm. And when you go in the business class, they tell you it's walk away in class. But when you actually go through their business class, you get the lease is um, $800 if you decide to terminate. I'm like, that ain't what you told me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, just feel, yeah. Um, uh, uh, Gideon's mic is together. I don't know what he's using, but his, his, his mic is situated. It's the Blue uh -huh. Yeti, bro. Blue Yeti. Oh, he got, he got the Yeti. I don't know how he attached it to his phone and everything. But listen, if, 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 uh oh. <laughs> I'm on the laptop, if, bro. <laughs> you're on the laptop because you're together. My question is, my question is, because Anthony's in the queue. He's listening to what you're saying right now. He can mm -hmm. hear you. So do you agree with the give it some time before you leave? Certainly. I'm just now feeling like I'm where I should be doing this now because I've, I'll be two years in April. And I'm confident now that I have a grasp upon the situation about how to budget money. Like right now I'm saving a thousand dollars a week, getting ready to go into a lease. Mm. Company why, driver. This is my question. And why is everybody telling everybody that I did it going in the first and you should do it? Well, you can do it, but here's the thing you have to, my thing is to mitigate risk because when you're brand new, you're more of a risk. It's mm. like an exacerbated risk. So when you go into it right away, as you mentioned before, you don't know how to drive that truck. Right. You don't know nothing. You don't know crap. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my language clean for the I for the hour. Yeah, man. He's been but, studying, um, studying in the back end. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm using your tips on YouTube, bro. But um okay, we can talk about that too when we don't know what's struggling. Okay. But um, yeah, you don't know what you're doing they're not going to give you the best truck to start off with anyway right so when you start off as a newbie learn how to drive that thing learn how to properly maneuver it and when i say drive it i don't mean get from point a to point b barely make it in i'm talking about doing it efficiently knowing the little subtleties and right. idiosyncrasies of that particular truck how long to stay in the seat how long to stay in your sleeper right right 10 hours up Right. I'm from the school of the trucker brown, bro. <laughs> now, 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 what I'm saying, see, and see, this is my thing. When you, when I come on here and I say, I don't think, because I got a few people in the queue here, but I'm hoping, I hope, with, I hope people got time today and I hope they patient today. But um, this is what I mean. Yes, some people can do it. Some can that doesn't necessarily mean that's you. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's not you. But at mm -hmm. the same time, all I'm saying is, man, listen, the best time of my trucking life was company. I remember you said that. No worries. I didn't care if the truck light came on. I didn't care. I didn't, I, I, it was the best time of my trucking life. That ended first month driving leads. So y'all are ruining the first, you know, the first honeymoon phase of the game, trying to catch up to some YouTubers that are leasing. Mm -hmm. And and this is another thing too. And Anthony, I want you to, to pay attention to this. 
some of these guys, like I used to say, they don't even show you a tire blow. Everything's good with them. Mm -hmm. I show you everything. They ain't never, three years, they ain't broke down, ain't popped a tire, ain't got inspected, nothing. How did that happen? It's because they only show you good things. So now you all psyched up. And you get in here and all the real stuff happening. You're like, what, 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 what is going on? Yes, you're going to break down. Your, your things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. And you have to come out of your pocket. Because, see, they may have a warranty on the truck, but they're not paying for those hotel stays. Right. And I done stayed in a hotel 16 days in California. And you ain't with no cheap hotels. <laughs> Come on, Gideon. You know what it is. I'm at the Ritz College. It's Ritz College. Listen, you ain't supposed to go to the Ritz College. I'm just saying, even, even if, if you know about California Fontana, you ain't paying under 100 no matter where you go. So you don't blew 1500 on the room. You still got to eat. They telling you all type of crazy stuff just because you didn't think to call in because they're holding you back because they're waiting on your warranty to say they're going to pay for it. So they didn't even start fixing on your truck to the eighth day. Mm-hmm. These are the little things. So really, if I, you knew this, you would have put the truck in the uh, shop. You'd have flew home and saved a thousand dollars. But since right. you're not that versed in what's going on, you just sit there and spend the money because you started to get into something too early. Take your time. Listen, Lowe started from the beginning. And he told Anthony, take your time. What does that tell you? That tells oh, you he knows what it entails. Gideon, you know how you know how the uh, the process goes. So I'm gonna leave you in. I'm gonna bring Anthony in here and see if he has some questions. After that, the boss man Law came in here. Messy Marvin went home. Law done showed up, and he about to he about to tell you young bucks exactly what you're supposed to do. Hold on, okay. Anthony, you got you got any questions for uh, Gideon? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so like I was telling uh, PB that I was just gonna sell my truck. I mean my car, and just you know still work. For the company that I'm working for, and just save up until I uh, buy my own truck. Now, and he was t well. He told me the same thing that Low told me. I mean, to to do leasing first, and then then worry about getting my own truck. Is that what do you think about that? I agree. <laughs> you agree completely. <laughs> See, Gideon, you look traumatized. My dude. <laughs> oh, I'm in a shipper right now. They went to lunch as soon as I pulled up. Uh oh, so you already pissed off about that. Listen, you definitely should do le leases. Listen, lease, you don't really own the truck. You can give it back. Even if it costs you $800, you can give it back. At the end of the day, they're going to tow that truck because it's theirs. And at the end of the day, they're going to get it fixed. Also, you're at Warner, so they actually have shops where you don't have to go wait in line. You can go to a Warner shop. So your Warner shop is different than actually going to the dealership. So if it ain't a too big of a problem, they're going to route you back to the Warner shop, which I think uh, 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 I forget what Warner places are. I think it's like Salt Lake and a couple other places. They're going to shop in Spring, Georgia. Right. And that shop is going to rush you in and out. And so, so it's like you, you basic, listen, when you lease with a company that big, Anthony, you are affiliated with the regime. Mm -hmm. You're affiliated with the way they want it to go. So things are a little bit easier. You must study up on the independent way you're thinking about while you're doing the regime way and being under their umbrella. So you're still studying. You're going through figuring out what you need to do, making sure your stuff is good. When you feel you're ready, and you got that appropriate amount of money. You, you, you got that appropriate amount of money. You feel you're ready. You step out there. But this is what you do. You keep that space in the regime warm and you make sure that relationship is good. Because you mm. can go out there like me and lose all 60 grand in eight months. Okay. So, <clears throat> so how would you run knowing that you are leasing how would you run? What would be the best way to to run? Well, I don't. I only know one way to run, Anthony. So I'm not really the best guy to ask about that. I'm gonna bring Law in here because he does a different thing than I do. But 
I only know how to, I'm an OTR driver, dude. That's what I am by DNA. So that's the way I would run. I would I would get up under a company like I am now that has unlimited freight, that pays percentage. Mm-hmm. There's a few of them, and I run the balls off of the truck. And I would and I would I would be I would be fine all over the country. I'm good to go. Now that's a hard lifestyle. Everybody don't want to do that. And people say you can make more money in other places, but I, since if I'm not well versed in it, I don't tell you something I don't know. I know that if you were to go buy a truck, lease it up under somebody who has unlimited freight, that could be Lowe's doing UPS, that could technically be Amazon, that could be a port in your city or a rail yard that has unlimited international freight, and you can be home every two, three days, every day. And you, I mean, it could be a lot of different things. There's so many different ways. You can do it. You just got to figure out, hold on, how do I want to run first before anybody spends some money? How does Anthony want to run month by month? And that's a question only Anthony can ask because I tell you to go out here six months at a time, which is stupid for, for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but you got to figure out what you want. So. A uh, question. You, no. you mentored a trucker named Jay, right? I definitely did. For a period of time, we start acting up and we start going through stuff. But yeah, are you still doing stuff like that? Yes, the trucker name Jay has a, has a access to has access to me uh, on my Patreon is really where I'm doing most of the mentoring. Um, it's only like twenty dollars a month, and and that gives people access to text me. So if they have a question, I can hit them with a quick text back and make sure they make the right decision. I'm doing a little something like that, but um, yeah, I'm definitely accessible to certain to certain people. Right, so I don't, I, I don't even know what Patreon. You know, I'm, I'm a older cat, so I really don't. Have Patreon, I'm, I'm. I, I, I'll drop the, I'll, I'll drop the link. This is what we'll do, because I got, a, I got, a, I got another heavy hitter in here who, who has another way of running, that I want you to talk to, which mm-hmm. is why this is the benefit, uh, of coming in here, mm-hmm. because there's more than my just point of view. Law the trucker is making it with the truck that he bought, if I'm not mistaken, the way you're talking about doing it, he's doing it. And he's doing it in a way where he's getting home often. So we're going to come in and he's going to tell us some of the uh, ups and downs of that direction. Okay. One sec, one, one second. Booyah, that's the Patreon right there. I just dropped the link of the thing. I, I'll get one over to you. Uh, Law, you here? What up? What up? What up? Now, Anthony's thinking about going and getting his own truck, but he's thinking, which way should I run? Now, I've told him, OTR, can you give us a little bit of, of what you do? Uh, first off, man, I want to say, please don't listen to Messi. Messi <laughs> more than that. Please don't. <laughs> he's a bad don't guy. Listen. That guy's that guy's wild. But right. Um, the first thing I would ask Anthony is what you want to do, like far as uh, you got a family, you say you got some kids or whatever. What do you want to do? What means most to you? Is it the money, the family? What's, what What means most to you? <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I understand. Like, I want, <clears throat> I need the money to be secondary and my family to be first. But right. the way that my family, the money have to be there. So you could be like, okay, I got this. Now I can focus on my family because they need right. to be taken care of too. Right. So, so I would say this. Now, if you have a good family, which a lot of truckers do have good families, where they could leave for, uh, I don't know, large periods of time, I would say stay OTR. Do the company thing. Learn the system that they're doing. Pick the brains of owner operators and other people that's running fleets under that company and then pick you up a lease when you're comfortable and run OTR and possibly train and try to run the money up as high as you can. That's what I would say. But if you are more concerned about the family, the money is significantly different. It's good money, but it's significantly different. And for me, it's worth it. You know what I mean? So it's just about what you want to do. That's the first thing I would advise any trucker. It ain't about 
trucking or what freight you run. It's about what what is your goal? What do you want? Because because ultimately, no matter the money, no matter what kind of freight you're running or what company you're running from, that ain't what makes you happy. What makes you happy is doing exactly what makes you happy, whether it's running the money up high or spending time with your family. That's the first thing that you got to figure out first. Is it the money that's most important to you? And your family can understand that and they right. understand you got to go and they want you to run the money up. And y'all are all on the same team with the same thought process. That is the first thing that a lot of truckers get into the game and they don't. Yeah, they just stay as focus on the money, but we'll see. You sound like you, you, you and your old lady are on the same accord. Now, if he was to buy a truck without no, like, up, like actually on without a bank carry, he just went to a dealership and got a truck. Uh -huh. What is some of the stuff he's going to expect when he leases under a company like something you're running? Now, honestly, um, I would say, um, but. How long you been you been driving already, or how long you been driving? I just <clears throat> now I just uh, tested out for this company. You just tested out, so I'm gonna be honest with you. I would definitely run under somebody else's truck and trailer and all of that and and everything before you get your own truck. I would at least do at least at one least year. six at least to eight year. months in somebody else's truck. But I'm gonna get into what to expect when you buy your own truck. But before you even think about buying your own truck, I would definitely run under somebody else's truck. I would Mess definitely, man, back, you're going to get some scrapes and nicks. You're going you gonna to hit your fish eye. You're going to hit your, your mirrors. You know, hit the fence. Move the trash can. Screw it. It ain't yeah. your truck. Yeah, you know, get it stuck in the mud, maybe. You know, I don't know. Whatever the case, the situation, there's situations you're going to run into, you know. Um. And you want to do that in somebody else's truck. You don't want to do it in a truck that you spending your hard-earned money on. You want to have all the basic trucking skills and mess up the regime stuff. Yeah, you want to do all of that and how to get your paperwork in and all of that. You want to do all that in somebody else's truck because whole another conversation. Woo! We get back into this now. I'm about to get into buying your own truck. When you buy your own truck, the things that you definitely have to look forward to is. Breakdowns, <laughs> they gonna come. You know what I'm saying? They could be big breakdowns. They could be small breakdowns. When you first starting off, I would advise you get some type of warranty where you're not shooting a whole uh, engine tear down out of your pocket. You know what I mean? How much where is it? How much is an engine tear down? Uh, I know the price. I got charged with. It. I want to load the law to tell y'all though. To start, you know what I mean? They Hold can on, get say it again. You broke, you, you broke up. What did you say? How much it was? It? 10 bands, 10,000. 10 did to 12,000. That's where to start. Did your indie That's company give you the money to do it? You said what? Is your Would your indie company that you're at now, will they give you the money to do that? No. 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 They might, if it was something like, a EGR valve that was a couple thousand, maybe then, but not no engine tear down. No, you better have a warranty or something set up so that you don't have to fork that whole thing. At least something with a deductible on it, <laughs> where you don't have to fork the whole twelve thousand over, so that you could at least get your feet wet. Because that's what's going. The breakdowns is what's going to sink you the most. If you watch uh, TB earlier videos, and you know that's how I, you know. I watch people like him or other people. And if you watch their early videos, you'll see how Dirty Red did you, did him. Terrible. The breakdown. He would stack his money up, stack his money up. Same thing I did when I bought my first truck. I would stack my money up, stack my money up. EGR value for the brand. Snatch. Another uh, uh what was the what was the other big thing? Because I had a whole engine tear down too. No, I had see, oh. I, I, I had the uh, 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 the dev system was getting me. The dev system, uh, it was something else though that with mine that I can't think of off the top of my head. But as I'm talking, I think of it. Right. Um, Big Red. You said what? What happened to Big Red? Big Red, <laughs> she uh, she eventually blew a seal, and they told me uh, 
the the hickma jig went off again it started spitting i think the turbo went out and spit oil through the uh uh, uh the situation and he told me uh 15 to twenty thousand. i said come get it i'm gone i'm done it ain't been nothing but problems and uh, see look i didn't understand one thing anthony when i bought it i didn't even request virgin rubber when i bought it what is that Vir see, see virgin rubber you want virgin rubber on the tires when you buy it i bought it and i had to replace everything that was rubber on the truck i'm talking about belts the 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 sleeper uh airbags all the airbags and all the tires that was about eighty eight hundred dollars the tires alone gonna be somewhere around three to four thousand. Yeah, I mean After that is the tires. Yeah, drives drives for that truck were forty eight drives are forty eight hundred bucks on a good deal. Then the front is twelve hundred plus putting on that's sixteen hundred. You add that together, then you gotta hit your belts, then you gotta do your uh all your airbags. So I was at eight thousand dollars out the gate before the truck was starting to break down. I was popping tires left and right, everything going like that. And it's another thing too that people don't think about when you do this. I was getting pinched by DOT because of the bad rubber <sighs> on top of it. Then after I got all that ripped in and out, I, mean, I paid all this off the debit card. This is coming out of my money. Yeah, yeah. Now I did that all that. Good. I did that all that. And then, I had, that. then I had to, then the truck started breaking down. Then, then I, I stopped and the, uh, 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 the death system, I don't remember exactly, that broke down. That was eleven thousand. Out of my, I swiped that on my credit card. <clears throat> eleven thousand plus. I had to get it. I had to get it towed ten miles. Anthony, that towing was twelve hundred dollars for ten miles. <clears throat> All this is coming out my debit cards and my credit cards. And on top of that, I'm not that good at the whole rigmarole. The tow out here. Brokers. The tow out here. I don't care. If they got to tow it five miles. Seven hundred dollars. They ain't even, I don't care if they got to go around the corner, if the shop right around the corner. Because if you're in Chicago, you got to get your truck off the street because you don't want the police to come get it. So you got to pay that tow truck or you got to have something when the police show up to show, look, I called the tow truck company, they on their way, whatever the case may be. Because the state trooper gets to, he going to get restless real quick. He going to get state trooper get restless real quick. And just to go around the corner, just to start as any tow company ever had, 700, easily. And and when you go buy your own truck, you don't went to an indie company. They don't send you that. Now, if you were to no. lease under a third party that runs a big carrier's freight, since you got their trailer, they're going to tow the truck for you. And you can tell them, break the tow payments up into six weeks. And you can be like, all right, the, the tow was $1,500. They're like, all right, we'll break it up into six weeks. You just give them two, $300 a week out of your money, and you ain't dying. That's why I be telling y'all, one on one hand, these guys are telling you, "Well, mega carrier is the devil." On the other hand, if you know how to use them back, they're not. Nope. No, I know a lot of cats right now. I know I got a couple cats right now. Cats that put me on, that they had their own trucks. They then ran their truck about three, four years. They ran the ran the man ran the engine off of that boy. It just ran it into the ground. You know, did got their money off of it. Of course, you know what I'm saying. They ain't really tripping about the truck breaking down. Cause they didn't have it for three, four years. So they didn't made 10 times over what that truck was worth. You know what I mean? They didn't spent, you figure when you buy a truck, uh, usually the way it works out, if you get a good truck and you do what you're supposed to do and everything works out really, really smooth, you're going to get one year out of it where you don't have a truck payment and you get to just run the money up. So the cast that I'm talking about, that's what they did. They bought the truck, they paid the notes and everything, maybe fixed it here and there, no, no real big hiccups, no real uh, major engine teardown. And they got that one year that they didn't have a note and they ran the money up. They, right now, it's two of them. These is cats that put me on. I got my own truck. I don't work for no company or nothing like that. They are sitting on a company truck right now. And I and I call them every day or every other day, and I'll be like, why you ain't went and bought another truck? And they're like, for what? I'm chilling. And they know how much money they miss. So that's what I'm saying. It's all up to, man, that's a lot of factors that go into this. You know what I mean? Now, me personally, 
I don't know if I was in a position, if I would sit as long as I did, it depends on the truck prices. You know what I mean? Everything is, you know, everything has its moments. Everything has its own, you know what I mean? Like timing. Timing is everything for the most part. And it is a pinch of luck. Don't let no trucker tell you that it ain't a pinch of luck. There is a lot of luck involved in trucking. And there's a lot of bad luck involved in trucking. <laughs> Man, what? A lot. So a lot of truckers that don't have these horror stories, man, don't let them fool you into they just good truckers. These people is lucky. They are lucky. Or lying. I was doing my first truck training at the regime, big company. We in a brand new Peterbilt. Yes, those suckers break down too. Brand new. Oh, yeah. A brand new truck will run you into the pole house. Chrome everything. My trainer got everything. Truck, one of the most beautiful trucks I've ever been on still to this day. Brand new Peterbilt. Yeah, they break down too. Three, they four, go five. To the top too. But he ain't really worried about it. He was the older cat. He had he had so much skin in the game. You know, at one week we ran it up. I looked at his uh his uh settlement. I made that joke over twelve thousand dollars in one week. Yeah, training is training is the secret, Anthony. Training is is where you trying to be, bro. That man showed me the settlement. So somebody that know what a twelve thousand dollar a week check look like and what what he did, you know, he know how he know the ins and out of the game. M S D M. They've been at it for years. They know what's going on, and even his truck breaks down, and he used it as a vacation. He go home. The man will go home. Tell me, hey, do what you want to do. I will call you. And we're going to get back at it as soon as the truck, you know, ain't nothing I could do. You know, I got to stop the training because now you could choose to go to another trainer or whatever. I didn't right. because I liked him. He was a good guy, clean, straightforward, had a lot of knowledge. So I didn't want to risk being on another truck and having to deal with a whole bunch of the training horror stories that I heard. You know what I mean? So I just waited out, got a little vacation out of it. And, um, but new trucks break down too. All the and time. This is, this so is what, the, uh, training was the key. What? <clears throat> tra tra training is the key because when okay, let's break down the basics of, of what's going to happen after you do your nine months or your year, and they say, "Hey, Anthony, you want to train?" You say, "Yes." First thing they're going to do is they're going to take your name and put you on the training board, and you're going to see loads you've never seen before. Now that's that's rule number one. When you train, you're at a whole new company without switching. So now you're officially priority. You're in the box of people that helps the company grow, and they treat y'all way different. So now you have access to to lows you didn't even know existed. So now once you do that, they are gonna put some sweet meat on your truck. They gonna put oh a you raping this dude. He ain't getting no money. You taking all of his miles. Everything that man was paying me like what four hundred a week or something like that. So I'm, I can't even remember. So think about it, Anthony. If your truck can do, if your truck can do six thousand dollars gross in a week, and you add a sweet meat rookie on there, and he ain't getting none of his money, you taking all of his shifts. So it's now it's like you getting paid twice a week. So you seeing six five seventy three hundred dollar checks easily, and that's what you do to say you do that for a year. And you can stack your money up very easily. And then you say, all right, I'm going to try my hand at buying my own truck and leaving. Now, Pete Gang, if you keep the door open, because my dad has done this too, if the truck screws you over, he'll go back and train again. And get it, run his money back up and then try it again until he get into a situation that works. But I didn't train for three years. I should have trained when I, as soon as they let me. Hmm. And, and if money is the objective, that's what I would. That's what I would. If. So, <clears throat> hello. Right. Yeah, I'm here. He, he just lost connection. So, so the best thing to do is learn from the truck. Okay. So you know I'm with Warner. Drive with right. Warner. Time right. for me to tra train. Train in six. Some you. Some people you ain't gonna be able to. Some people they ain't shouldn't even be ready to train in six months. Now nah, that's. I agree. <clears throat> so now we're talking about your. We talking about your integrity, and your pocket. See, my integrity was so together, and I, I was so stubborn. I didn't train for the first three years. 
And I'm going to be real. My students benefited from my integrity, but I lost a bunch of money. I, dude, I could have been training for two years, mm-hmm. seeing five, six, three, four, five, six, seven thousand dollar checks. But I was just like, how am I trained if I don't know everything? And I waited and I it, my students appreciated it. But my my uh, my business model was like, dude, you left a lot of money on the table. My trainer had only been driving six months, only had a CDL six months. <sighs> And it was wrong. You say, well, that's wrong. But he was get out. He was getting two, three, four thousand dollar check. And he was 22. He was younger than me. Wow. So it's like you got to make a decision to say, all right, I'm going to get my money up. I can train for a year, keep studying, run the bag up. And then when I go in, I'm going over there with 40, 50 thousand dollars, 60 thousand dollars. And and I'm secure because I know. If this don't work, I'm just run back and train. All right. So now your worry level ain't as high. Like you like, this ain't nothing. This don't work for me. Then I'm I'm just go back and do what I know and run the bag up. So that's what I mean. That's what low means by, hey, man, just try to use their stuff first. Screw it up. Pop tires, hit curves, shift wrong, uh, uh, back into places, uh, run over stop signs, put it in a ditch. You turn, bend the, bend the, uh, cause the first thing you're going to do as a rookie, you're going to bend that little wing that's on the back. When you turn, when you jackknife it too hard, you know, do a, get all that out the way. And when you feel secure, go in there and say, listen, man, my LLC been up for two, three years. Give me that truck right there. And, um, you go 20 grand and you know what to do. And, and another thing too, you know what you want to run. See, I never, ever said that before. You need to pick what you want to run before you buy the truck. Yeah. yeah. So you got to know that, you know what? I'm a reefer cat. That's what I am. Hmm. And you're a reefer. I don't know if you that yet, but you want our drive in? Yeah, I think I'm doing uh, the, the Dollar General account where we unloading the truck, actually. Okay, well, there's a lot of LTL companies you can make a bag with with your own truck. So. But you can make a big bag. Really, I just wanted to. Uh, I just wanted to. You know, what I mean, I knew, I knew, I know. Car hauling is a beast. You know, what I mean, because you gotta get up there and lock down. I know car hauling is a beast, so I know. Um, I know uh, flat bedding is a beast too. Right. So I'm like, be out there because all my all my truck always getting out, unloading, mm-hmm. breaking my back. I'm like, man, it's time for me to stop. Now nah, stop doing all this hard work. Right. Hey, hey, that's that that's a fact. Listen, Anthony, I think that you're gonna do great because the fact that you're even open to hearing other people's advice, you're 10 miles ahead of it, most truckers that start. Cause, Cause like listening, like listening, like my cousin, he like he was driving and he was like bumping. I'ma just buy my own truck. Now, he bought his own truck and he he working for this company. And he getting percentage, right? He making whatever he making, you know. What I mean, I'm, you know, I mean, it's not, you know, how, you know, one week you make, you know, and then the other week, you know, what I mean, but on a, you know, you know how it goes, you right? Know? So I'm like, dang, you know, what I mean, I want to do just what he doing, but then when I listen to you, you like, don't be everybody ain't the same, everything ain't the same, it ain't always like that, right? Said, Okay, I can't get too hyped because I wanted to buy my own truck. So I still want to ask those questions. Mm-hmm. I wanna I wanna be able to know what's gonna set me at the best for me, like what I really want. Like first I know I'm gonna be out there. I know like, you know, I'm probably gonna be out there for a minute. And then right. and then eventually as I learn how to work it and still make those numbers mm-hmm. oh, that I that I need to make. You know what I mean? Because you know you you have at least like, okay, at least if I make this, I'm okay. You know what I mean? Right. But I'm, I do $1,500 I'm a week, I'm good. Yeah, and, but I'm I want to more I can. So once I get to that point, I want to, <clears throat> but at the same time, I wanted to know the best way to set myself up for success. 
All right. Well, listen, listen. This has been a good session. You calling in? I gotta, I got the cue backing up on me, so I gotta kind of, I gotta, I gotta move on. But what I do want you to know is, uh, this is gonna be recorded. You can go back and write down some of the things that's been said. And if you come up with more questions, I'm trying to do this almost as every day that I can. So I'm gonna be on here. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. I, I see you every every morning. I will yeah. you at eight, but. Yeah, <laughs> I'm on a different part of the country. I appreciate you calling in, Anthony. I hope to see you tomorrow as well. Thank you. All right, no problem. Don't do drugs. Um, what what are your thoughts on these guys? Okay, let's let's get let's we're gonna get back to the title. I gotta re I gotta repackage this. Uh, Gideon, I see that you're back. Uh, Law has to get some stuff off. I don't know if they still. One second, let's see what they're going. Gideon, what happened? Man, I'm just waiting to get assigned a door. Damn, it sucks. <laughs> yeah. But I'm patient, bro. I, do your thing, man. I'm patient. You got to do what you got to do. Hey, we all yeah. been there. Yeah. You yeah, can't yeah. even out the rearview mirror. You can't even lay down. You can't even get comfortable because you, you know. They're going to knock on the door. You know, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You steady looking out the mirror waiting to get in that door. Once you get in the door, then you can lay out and wait on them. To, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right, get in. When you get in the door, we gonna we gonna sit and uh just back and forth, just me and you. Let me let me let me get get in it with uh with Law real quick. Yeah, no problem. Bang. And uh, uh I don't appreciate you getting a better mic than me neither. So we gonna have to discuss that <laughs> as well. Let's get that out the way. Bang. Gonna come on here with with the Howard Stern mic. He ain't trying to uh, show you, didn't he? <laughs> exactly. He over here with the with the deep voice and stuff. Like, bro, squeak your voice up. Oh, no, yo. Um, on your on show. my show, that's a thing like that. Is he about to start a show? What is he? What is he? Why does he sound so good right now? Oh, uh, Gideon, <laughs> hey, I ain't mad at him. I like, hey, I like. Him. Oh, I Gideon's, like a, Gideon's a solid dude. The, the title is Trucking. Don't wait to go lease. So this now, is my, so this is my two cents. All right, because me and you, we don't see, we don't see it the same. You know what I'm saying? From everything right. I've heard from you. Everything mm -hmm. I've heard from other people, we, me and you, we on a little bit of different wavelength. We know the the pressure that comes with it because we've both been in the game. You've been in the game longer than me. I only been I've been driving probably as long as way too fly. I think I started in 2017. Right. So I, you got more skin in the game than me, but we both then popped a few tires out here and had a few ERG valves in place. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know. So, um, far as the title, far as my thought process, and this is strictly coming from somebody that I'm 40 years old. You know what I'm saying? I'm way more mature than somebody that would be 20 years old that's still trying to chase the clout. You know what I'm saying? That's trying to chase all this other stuff. Right. My opinion, in all honesty, if you are a responsible person and you really out here trying to get your business together, I would honestly say go under the regime. For six months, whichever regime you choose, whoever you know that's helping you get to the biggest bag starting off because the bag is going to be small regardless, whoever right. you've been company with. Go with that company. Bust your head for six to eight months. And then once you get used to being on time, because the job ain't going to change that much. You're going to see different stuff. You're going to see different seasons. So knock that first one out. And I don't mean come in at the tail end of the winter. I mean really start before the winter and work through the winter so you can see how the freight changes and how the roads change and how the construction changes and go through these big cities in the wintertime and just get used to that. And then after six to eight months, once you feel like you got the paperwork in the gist of what you're doing, the job, if you're in a reaper division, a tanker, whatever you're doing, mm -hmm. once you got it down, go ahead and get more aggressive and challenge yourself to do bigger numbers mm. because your expectations are going to constantly change. Whereas when you first get in the game, you might be happy with a $1,500 check. And then you're going to mess around and get everything down packed and you might get a $2,700 check. And when you figure that out, that's going to start to be your expectation. You're going to be pissed when your check is $1,200. When you start making $4,000 checks and you get a $1,700 check, which maybe seven months ago you were, you would have been fine with. $1,700 is good living every week. 
But when right. you get to make a four thousand dollar check, seventeen hundred dollars is a slap in the face. <laughs> so your everything is definitely going to change for you, and you're going to have to learn. Okay, it's January. Boy, it's holiday season. It's Christmas. That seventeen hundred dollar check going to come. You you know that already. You know what I'm saying? But me personally, a lot of cats are saying two years or one year. I say six to eight months. If you really, if you really get on your grind and don't go tricking off, don't be trying to go home all the time. Do the work. Go go in the truck. Get to as many places as you can. Back as much as you can. Do as much backing. Get down pack what you need to do with the basics of trucking and step it up and just start doing the paperwork and managing your own fuel and figuring that part of the game out and, you know, slowly get these little, you know, giblets in, uh, like what to do when you're doing breakdowns uh, as far as sleeping in hotels or going home, you know, get to get used to it because it ain't going to change. The truck is going to break down. You're going to need new tires. You're going to do all these things. So you might as well get used to it. It's coming. And so don't duck it. I say don't duck it. And that's the listen, that's that's the freaking biggest freaking truth that people don't really tell you. It's coming. It's coming. It's 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 it's, it's no joke. Gideon, where you at? I Yo, I'm right here. I got some more people in the queue. Uh they haven't sent their cash app. I don't know what to tell you. You're just gonna sit there until it's sent. They paid their money, you gotta pay yours. Um now that you've been through what you've been through, Gideon, um, are are you done? Are you done? What, where's your mind stayed at after going through what you went through? I took it as a lesson, bro. I've learned that I had to be better with my money. I had to put more away and just be prepared for whatever. So right now I'm trying to get back to it. I'm trying to either lease or purchase, but I'm trying to get back to it. So you you you, you done licked your wounds. You feel like I right, I can try it again. Yeah, it's not a loss. It's a lesson. Mm, that's a dope saying. They go on a t-shirt. It's not a loss. It's a lesson. One second. <coughs> Goddamn wrong. Bless you, bro. Um, but it's not a loss. It's a lesson. So right now you're doing company. You're stacking your chips up. And you and this is the thing. There's nothing wrong with company because sometimes you can feel like, man, I got more money as a company driver. Yep. Like clockwork between sixteen and twenty four hundred a week. Pressure. What are you hauling? I'm at um VL with Jay. Really? I'm one of his referrals. So you and you gave him the referral. See, people go over there, don't Bruh. even give him the referral, bro. Bruh, the just like you, just like I throw you cash all the time. 